this weekend post, dividing your scene into different elements and adjusting them individually. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to InPost. Thanks for joining me today. But today's video will be pretty quick. It's a, a technique that I realize I use all the time, but I don't know if I've talked about in the videos. So I thought I would do that today. And it's about identifying different elements in your scene and adjusting them uh, individually. Although sometimes um, it, it, as, as a collective, and it'll make a little more sense. I show you this example here. So this photo is uh, one of the sunset photos I took. I shared the outing with you on in the field early in the week. This is an unfinished version of the photo. I'm using this one here because I ended up making a whole ton of adjustments and some major retouching to remove the power lines. Uh, so we're going to work with this photo here because the response from Lightroom will be snappier. I will show you the big uh, finish of the photo here at the end. But, uh, what I want to show is what I've done with the foreground. And so I have the graduated filter tool active. And you can see I've got a few pins here. One here, one here, and one here. And this one, as you can expect, that's just doing a little bit of darkening on the sky. What I wanted to make sure is I darkened the foreground some because I want to have this area of the photo. This was really my subject, all these misty hills here. So if I turn off the graduated filters, we can see, all right, there's some natural darkness here. I wanted to enhance that. I wanted to get a little more depth and a little more uh, crispness in the foreground here and really emphasize how misty and hazy it was out there. So I did two different gradient tools. Now the first one's here and I'll click on that one. I have sh showing the selected overlay here and that's the foreground. When I first applied this mask I did not make any adjustments. So over on the sliders I had nothing set. So no changes at all. I just double clicked effect to zero those things out. Made sure I got my mask correct. Then for the second graduated filter I'll hover on that for a moment. You can see I've got a, a more intricate mask. There is a full strength being applied here in the foreground and a little bit less in the midground. So there's there's some differences in playing with the brushing here for the, the strength of these, these settings over in the brushing area where we've got the flow and the density. And again, I did this mask without making any changes to the sliders. Once I had the masks in place, I started working with the sliders. And we can see that for this second one, which is affecting both ridge lines, let's call this ridge number one in the foreground, ridge number two, the second one here, I'm adding clarity to that. I'm actually darkening it. And knowing that this first graduated filter, which is just affecting ridge one, I had also done some darkening on. And I was able to just to pop back and forth between these. Let me turn the mask overlay off. As I popped between them, I could make adjustments here and say, I like me darken this down here. Do I like that? No, that's way too dark. I'll undo that. I could go back to this pin and start making tweaks that I want to add a little more contrast. What was that going to do? And I got to play these what if games pretty quickly, being able to work with both of these elements kind of as a set, but treating them separately and differently. So passing that tip along, you know, do some masking up front to isolate those elements. And then you can adjust the sliders and just, you know, just start to play those what if games. You don't necessarily have to know exactly how you want to adjust the element, but if you are able to isolate it with a mask, then you can play all the what if games that you want. So you can see the finalized image here. Here is the completed product. Uh, this took uh, probably about two to two and a half hours to do all of the adjustments on removing those power lines. They ran through all of these hills and uh, quite uh, amount of intricate work with the retouch brush. I did do it all in Lightroom, kind of uh, almost as a proving ground to myself to prove that I could do it. Uh, I didn't know it was going to take <laughs> as long as I thought when I started, uh, but I was able to get the results that I wanted. And unfortunately, it takes Lightroom so long to render everything because there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these little points where I was adjusting and you know fine tuning and erasing things. But the end results I'm, I'm really happy with. I, I love the way this photo looks and um, I'm eager to get this this, uh, onto some paper and onto a wall. That'll do it for this week's in post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know somehow. Comment on the video below. Contact me through my website with your photo questions. Would love to hear from you. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.